Hi everyone, welcome back to another live session. As always, excited to be back. Uh, we got tons to unpack today um, for the community. So we're going to, well, we're gonna dive right in and, and talk a little bit about what's going on with the current landscape, everything that's happening, everything that we're seeing. Um, and as people hop on, uh, it's pretty uncommon to not have questions lined up. Okay, so as we go through this, just make sure, throw those questions in there. That's what I'm happy to do. I'm happy to answer any questions, comments, and obviously any data you can bring to the table is going to be super valuable for the audience. So the layoffs are getting a little crazy. Um, we've seen a lot coming through this week, obviously, with Stripe, with Twitter. Um, there are some huge whispers uh, about what's going to happen at Meta. Um, there, there's been whispers of up to 20,000 layoffs at Meta, which would be a pretty big number now. Sometimes with these layoffs, sometimes the people that are impacted can be contractors. So that can also be interesting to see how it impacts full-time employees versus contract employees, but um, just something to keep in mind. So, uh, well, let's talk about it. Uh, so here's what we're seeing and some of the things that I'm seeing in the landscape, and we'll just wait for questions to come in, and then I'll do a, a quick introduction. But why don't we just dive right into it and get into the weeds right away? So um, some interesting things. So let's kind of highlight what we're seeing at some of the companies. So, you know, Google is uh, still pretty deprioritized for the rest of the year. We're seeing um, from a deprioritization standpoint, uh, what we're seeing is, is that it's a case-by-case -case basis, and there's really no niche down across any market anywhere. The positive of what I've seen with Google is some of these roles are considered priority roles or, or they just call them priority or high priority roles, which means the compensation has actually been much higher than normal in certain cases. I mean, we're talking potentially up to 100K more per year for some of these, even like level five positions. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, what we've seen with both Meta um, and Amazon is, is the offers have been a little bit lower. And obviously, we're getting whispers of not only hiring freezes, but potential layoffs at both those companies. Um, Microsoft is also doing some pausing. Um, I've had some clients uh, directly impacted by that as well. So we're just seeing absolute craziness. So we're going to talk a lot about the current landscape today. And that will kind of be our trend and probably focus for the rest of the year as much as we're going to drive for lives uh, for the rest of the year. We'll probably do and go into some early mid-December before shutting down for a couple weeks. So I'm going to do a quick step back and then uh, and then we can dive into all the questions. So this is your first time here. My name is Jeff H. Seip. Uh, the business is practiceinterviews.com. I'm going live now every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's a shift. That's a change from the first 90 or so sessions where we were going on Wednesday. So this will be the new day and time. I'm always happy to shift that time. I do one-on-one -on -one interview coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one negotiation coaching. All those coaching sessions will be done directly with me. And we have a special offer today, 100 bucks off our interview mastery course. It's a great offer if you use the coupon code SHINE. S-H-I-N-E, if you use that coupon code SHINE, you'll get 100 bucks off the course just till 11.59 Pacific time today. Hey, if you like what we're doing today, smash that like button. If you've never subscribed, again, live every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And now I'm going to do original content videos every Monday. So everything, uh, personal conflicts, so everything had to be shifted back a day earlier, which I think Monday videos and Tuesday lives, it, it should work good for the audience, I hope, based on the analytics that I see. Let's dive in. Let's have some fun. Remember, I am here to help. I will answer all the questions as they come in order. It doesn't just have to be questions, it can be comments, anything that you think would be interesting for the community or anything to hold the community up. Let's dive in. You're interviewing, interviewing for GAPP in India. It's been more than one month since passing first round, still waiting for the second round notification. Okay. In the meantime, Google has reposted the job listing four times on LinkedIn. Does it mean that they're not happy with the current pool of candidates? So much of what we've seen with the job posting, the, the postings coming up and going back down is it's been really just funky this year. They're like pulling them up really quickly. They're pulling them down really quickly, putting them back up. Um, you've got to check in with your recruiter if you haven't done it and check in on a weekly basis, just checking in. I'm still engaged, interested, excited, but the fact that 
you haven't heard anything in a month is a little bit surprising. Um, so just make sure you're following up. Okay. Um, Jeff, I heard something about Apple not hiring again until late 2023. Do you think Google will follow suit? So I don't think that any one of these companies can literally make blanket statements like that because there will be attrition, there will be unanticipated needs that pop up, right? There's just too much that's going to happen. So uh, no, I haven't heard that. So thank you so much for sharing that. That's a very like interesting data point for us to be exploring. I haven't heard it. Um, but do I think hiring will be slow in 2023? Absolutely. I think we are going to be in a painfully slow hiring year. And I think we'll start to see some of those unemployment numbers rise across different countries. We're going to see some different pain points happening um, between inflation and war and climate change and all these things. So and there's a lot upcoming, um, but this is a data point that I haven't seen before. So, so thank you for sharing. And we'll just have to keep an eye on it. And if you know anything else, please share. Hey Raul, uh, Meta recently rescinded an IC5 data engineer written offer worth 310K USD. Yeah, so with Meta, um, so let's talk about this. I, I have a Meta client right now. Um, Meta's been incredibly difficult to negotiate with. They, they almost don't negotiate unless you have data. I still would encourage you strongly to push back. You can probably push the needle L4, L5, L6, like 20 to 30K on that initial offer as long as you stay really strong. They'll move the base up a little bit. They'll move the equity up a little bit, maybe a small sign on. If Meta is not giving you that money, push, push, push. But if you are negotiating with Meta, speed up the process. I like super slow, but based on current economic conditions, sometimes we're going to need to move a little bit faster. So you just have to push back, come in with massive empathy anchor really high with meta and then you'll you'll chop your way down because you know, they're not going to negotiate very strong so um meta's got some some challenges ahead okay um so just something for everybody to keep in mind thanks for that Raul, as always and by the way Raul is part of our slack group our slack group is free in the ask me anything section we have about 3600 members data comments feedback the community holds each other up it's all free you can sign up at practiceinterviews.com. Jeff, I have my batch interviews next week. Your videos have been excellent prep. Resource, absolutely. Thanks for being here. You talk about presenting visuals and details. What are your thoughts on using a screen share to present info to the interviewer, for example, Google Slides? Okay. We actually get this question very rarely, and it's a fantastic question. And so here's what I want you to do. It's probably not, okay, the answer is probably not. But what I want you to do is I want you to have that tab open, ready to present. And if you get a question where you feel like that presenting that information would support you or help, help in your answer, you're simply gonna say to your interviewer, I came in prepared to share a couple slides with you if the question pertained to this specific project that I worked on. But I obviously don't wanna share my screen without your approval. Would I allow you to do it in an interview? Absolutely not. I wouldn't, I don't want you to have this plan and be able to come in and have this plan in an interview, but be ready for it. You will have occasional interviewers who say, yeah, show me your screen. So just make sure it's fully prepped. Okay. Great question. And good luck. Hey Jeff, can you please provide a sample response for the prompt? Tell me about a time when you had to prioritize tasks in a project. So <laughs> it's kind of funny for me to tell you this, but, but the answer is actually no, because Tell me about a time when you had to prioritize tasks in a project is a behavioral answer, right? So it really has to be based on prior experience. Now, the setup should be something that's relatively large or complex, right? So you're having to talk through something that really had multiple tasks, but you're getting into those tasks and actions quickly. Not a lot of background story on why you needed to complete all those tasks really outline the specific actions that you took as quickly as possible. And then the results, what were the results of prioritizing those tasks and why was that beneficial? And then how did you repeat a similar process in the future to end your results? I, I hope that helps. And you're welcome. Yes, and you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> what is, 
Uh, what is going wrong with Meta? And also, will you be paying eight for that blue tick? Oh, um, well, I don't know what that second part is. Uh, what's going on with Meta is that their financials are really, really poor. Um, and because of those poor financials, uh, they're going to have to lay off some people. And, and, and it's really all driven by this like push for corporate profits, which hasn't really played out that well in a bad economy with inflation. So um, tell us more about that eight for that blue tick. I don't know what that means. That'd be great to know. I've never heard of anything like that. Um, I interviewed for Booking.com Amsterdam for a SWE engineer interview two weeks ago. Okay. I got an offer from Amazon a month ago. They went, you're interviewing for an L6 to, well, we like you. You've the one that gotten an offer for this role, but we'll start you at L5. Can they do that? Um, you're the only one that has gotten an offer for this role, but we'll start you at an L5. Oh, so, okay. So got an offer from Amazon. You're interviewing for, so, just because you were interviewing for an L6 doesn't mean it can't land at an L5. It's a different thing if they gave you an offer, confirmed offer at L6, and then wanted to move the level down. Um, booking.com, uh, I hear really good things about booking.com. Um, in general, I've had some clients uh, trying to go there or working there. So I do hear good things there. Um, you'll want to outline the comp. Uh, booking.com might have a better environment than Amazon, but Amazon might pay better. Uh, come back if you have any have any more questions, okay? Do you have any specific advice for somebody impacted by layoffs? How do we position ourselves in such a competitive market? Yeah, so I, I just want you to understand, and, and like if you have been impacted, I'm really sorry, but this is uh, positioning yourself, you know, other people are going to be impacted, and I think there will just be a general There'll be general empathy and understanding, so I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that item. Um, but positioning yourself, you're really trying to align skill sets with the new roles that you're going after. And then I think the other piece is just patience, because if we're so eager and we're pushing so hard to get that new job, we can create some stress and anxiety. And, and obviously, I don't want that to happen for anybody. So. But positioning yourself, yeah, it's really about role alignment, skill alignment, but just know that you have a very easy story to tell, right? Bad economy, stuff happens, and, and that's why you're at where you're at. I hope that helps. Do we ask questions here? Absolutely. Yep. Questions here? I'm happy to answer anything that comes through. I never saw layoffs from Google. Do you think that will happen in these market conditions? Last time Google had like real true layoffs was 2008. Um, the answer is, I don't know. I mean, I want to say no, they care a ton about their brand, but we'll just have to see what goes on with the economy. I think even they'll feel the pain and squeeze at some point to where they might need to have layoffs. I think it's definitely possible, uh, but they're going to do their best not to, because they really care about their brand and they've done a little bit better on the branding than some of these other companies during these tough economic times. I'm starting as a staff engineer next week in India. Any advice for me? Well, first of all, congrats. It's great to hear that people are getting offers. Obviously, it's a super, super tricky time. When you start a position, your branding is so critical. You want to be seen as a great listener. So you want to listen a lot. You want to talk last. So really hear and listen to what people are saying because you're going to learn more about the environment and things. So be the last to speak. Right. So lots of good questions, lots of positivity, um, lots of like raising your hand and saying, hey, I'd be happy to take that on or I'd be happy to work with Sue on that initiative, et cetera, et cetera. So you are really making sure that you are creating a positive brand because build that from the beginning. And that will be the best way to set, your, set, your, set yourself up for success. I hope that helps. Jeff, what's the factor for a solutions consultant compensation compared to a SWE at the same level? Solutions consultants is about 0.7. So if you've never been here before, my formula is you use levels.fyi, 
the most data will be software engineers. You take with the last five or 10 software engineers at your level got paid in that market, take that average. And for most less technical roles, it's gonna be about 70% of that, give or take, it depends on the role, but for solutions consultants, 70, 75% would be my best guess. Hi, Jeff, any update on UK hiring of GAM companies right now? Wow, we're really getting good with the acronyms. We're just calling them at anything these days, but um, UK hiring is really no different than any other market. We've just seen it be extremely consistent across all the markets, slow, case by case, real need basis, and I haven't seen any difference in the UK versus any other market currently. Any advice for public policy roles in Google? Sam, I'm gonna throw that right back to you. Um, anything more specific that you're curious about, come back and, and ask, please. Elon Musk wants folks to pay $8 a month to remain on Twitter with a blue check mark. Okay. Okay, I mean, we'll we'll see. This is actually kind of interesting. This has been a Google question for years. Like, what if Facebook started charging five bucks a, a month? Or what if Twitter started charging 10 bucks a month? I mean, it's not a bad idea to monetize. I mean, I think the, the real benefit of Twitter, I'm not, I don't really tweet a lot, but the benefit of Twitter is breaking news like if you want to know what's happening right in the moment twitter is such a great resource something happens and you go to twitter and you get tons and tons of data that's where i find it to be the most beneficial personally um so okay i mean twitter might blow up i think we can all say that i mean what elon's doing I, who knows i guess he can do whatever he wants but it's just been Really, really crazy to watch. I think we can all agree it's just not been normal. Yeah, uh, would I pay $8 a month for Twitter? I don't know. Maybe. I don't use it very much, but I think for the convenience of it, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Twitter would charge, okay. Also known as Twitter. Okay, it's so silly. Okay. Um... One of one, I saw your poll on interviewers having the camera off. Is that still happening? Okay. Okay, great. And then let's talk. How do you ask them politely and request them to turn their camera on? Could this be problematic? Do you want, do not want to start on a negative with an interviewer? Okay. This is a fantastic question. And so I think the poll you're addressing was, it was probably early, it was probably early this year, maybe late last year even, but, but probably early this year. So I did. I ran a poll on LinkedIn that just basically said, have you ever conducted an interview where the interviewer didn't turn their camera on? And the stats were unreal. It was like 35 to 40 percent. We'll call it 35 percent. But about a third of people had been in an interview, a video interview, where the interviewer didn't turn their camera on. I cannot emphasize to this community enough, if that happens to you, you simply ask, Oh, um, are we going to be turning on cameras today? And if they say, no, I'm not turning on my camera, you'll politely ask them, should I keep my camera on? They say, yes. Okay. And then you will go through the interview. And then immediately after the interview, you will message your recruiter, your hiring manager, your point of contact, and you will simply say, I just had a very poor candidate experience. My interviewer did not turn on their camera for a video interview. Is this normal? Is this okay? Do I have an opportunity to redo it if it doesn't go well? Because that is so unacceptable. And so, you know, from an accountability standpoint, if I was an organization and I found out that an interviewer didn't turn on their camera during an interview, I instantly would not allow them to meet expectations for that quarter, um, that biannual review. That is such a negative branding experience. That is just obnoxious. You put all your time and energy into it. Obviously, I feel very, very passionate about this. It's not cool. Um, and so you need to make sure if that happens, you give feedback. I think you go in with a nice soft tone. Oh, is it possible to turn your camera on? If they say no, say, okay, should I keep mine on? Because if they say no, you can turn yours off. Okay, great. That's what we want to do. Because how awkward is that for you to have your camera on and for them not to have their camera on? 
not a good candidate experience. We need to give that feedback when that happens because apparently, according to a LinkedIn poll, it's happening about one third of the time, which is just blows my mind. Thanks for the question. How do referrals long tenure employed to G into getting an interview have relevant experience, but not breaking through Do cover letters help? Okay, so referrals um, from a longer tenured employee versus a less tenured employee, it's gonna be not as important. A referral, what it does is it really just escalates your candidacy in a positive way so that you're more likely to get eyes on your application and resume. Cover letters in tech, no. They, nobody reads them, nobody cares. I think cover letters are incredibly antiquated and a total waste of time. And when companies ask for them, they have a very dated system. We used to write cover letters back in the day because we didn't have other ways to look up candidates, whether that was LinkedIn or other online resources so that we could learn more about them. Cover letters are old, they're dated, they're totally unnecessary. I don't believe in them at all. And I'll tell you in tech, Absolutely nobody reads them. Um, how do we figure out which company to consider working for in such difficult times? Well, we just want to make sure that you have good role alignment, right? So we're really looking for you to have that strong role alignment. Um, and then it's really like, what are you looking for? I mean, some people like the kind of churn and burn Amazon culture. Some people love the Google, the more fun culture. Um, it could also be based on what your focus area is. If you're really design focused, aesthetic focused, maybe you go to Apple. So a lot of it depends on you. Um, and I think just based on the fact that it is difficult, you try and cast a wide net and, and open as many opportunities for yourself as you can. Hi, Jeff. Had your PM screen at Google yesterday and promptly bombed it due to personal extenuating circumstances. This is my phone, second phone screen. First one exhibited really poor behavior. Oh, boy. Okay. So worth asking my recruiter for another shot. Have you in your time as a recruiter experienced this before? I have. Um, personal things come up. So just for the community who's watching right now, it's really important that if like something personal comes up in our lives and we all have things, right, that you actually cancel the interview and you say something really personal came up. I'm sorry to do it last minute. I always prefer canceling over trying to conduct an interview when we're not mentally in the right headspace. OK, so that's going to be my recommendation. Now, did I have candidates asked to redo because of personal circumstances? I did did not have a high success rate with that at all, but it, it's worth trying. But your comment is really helpful for the community. You can always postpone for the most part, you know, especially if you're, if you just have something on your mind or something's going on, always postpone. But, but Zach, keep us updated. Let us know, um, continue to check in and keep us posted. Reached out by an Amazon recruiter for Okay, an eng manager position, it's backfill 05 position, informed by my friend at Amazon. I put NA on my expected comps in the app and the recruiter said, I understand you're negotiable and let's see if we can align our expected total comp is around X at the base and Y. Shouldn't give me any salary range, but for my friend, I know the recruiter's offer is right in the middle of the range. She said, if you confirm you're comfortable around, we'll proceed with a call with the HM. How should I proceed? Yeah, you're basically gonna say, well, obviously I want to revisit comp in the future. It seems okay right now. So you might kind of set the tone, but you're going to set it in a gracious and kind way. I'm open and negotiable for the right opportunity. I want to see where the level lands, et cetera, et cetera. So you just got to proceed. I mean, this is ridiculous that they're not moving forward until they get an acceptance on this. I mean, this is just this is individual recruiter practice. They should not hold these kinds of cards. You don't have level confirmed. You haven't met with the team. You don't know anything. So why can you say that works or it doesn't work? But I would just agree and say, okay, I think we're at an okay starting point. So I'm ready to proceed and we can discuss as things go great, and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think you're okay to proceed. I know you're 
not too sure with the tech industry being impacted across the board with man companies to believe are being the least impacted negatively or more which or oh, which fan companies do you believe i mean i think we've seen that google has been the most stable throughout all of this so i'm going to say google um i think apple has appeared to be relatively stable as well um and then i think you know amazon uh, meta and microsoft are showing some freezes and some layoffs coming but anything's possible yeah is there still a priority for google cloud positions i heard there's been a lot of pressure for all cloud providers so I'm not sure the investment will continue. Curious about your thoughts. Well, the earnings report showed a very favorable result for GCP, um, that they're continuing to build the revenue. Um, and so I just think we gotta let the dust settle a little bit in Q4. I think in Q1, Q2, you're gonna see some serious ramp up in, in GCP hiring. That'll probably be a big focus area for them. Um, so I think just, just for anybody who's in like the team match stage or just holding on Google Cloud, I think Q1, definitely Q2 of next year, you're going to see some hiring for GCP, my best guess. Okay. All right. So we're back to the booking.com interviewed at booking.com last week for an SE2 role and recruiter reached out and told me last week that my feedback is positive and discussed a few numbers. Is it too late as I have not heard back? Um, nope. Just follow up again, see, but obviously I want you to be negotiating on those numbers as much as you can. Send uh, an influencing letter to me, DM for a template if interested. So you're appearing as a LinkedIn user, so I hope the two of you can figure this out, but if you can provide some more contact info, if you want to help somebody, um, that's great, but you may not be showing up appropriately so that they could connect with you. Just heard the entire Amazon robotics team has been laid off. <sighs> okay, wow. All right, I don't know how many people were impacted, Raul. Can you, if you have that data point and want to share that, come tell us. I don't know how big that team is. How many team matching calls in maximum can Google allow given the current situation? There is no total number. Um, as many as you can get, you should take, okay? But there is absolutely no set number. Hi, hey Jeff. I'm joining Google next month. Awesome. L4 PGM. In this economics condition, what are your two cents on jumping the ship? FYI, I'm working for semiconductor industry right now. I mean, you should definitely be taking that job and moving forward and assuming the best. I mean, worst case scenario, you have Google on your resume and you can move forward. I mean, I recommend taking it. All. Obviously, the ultimate decision is up to you, Dave, but I, I would take the role and, and move forward. Currently interviewing for Cloud Infra Engineer at Google. Now with freezes and stuff, I'm not hearing back from my recruiter. Is this normal? What options do I have? And how long do I wait? Will I be reconsidered if the freeze continues? Apply to Zach. I've canceled my inner canceled my inner interview with the Google recruiter due to personal reason, which she was happy to reschedule. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. All right, so um, if you're not hearing back from the recruiter, just got to keep following up okay so graciousness and kindness will put a lot of pressure on your recruiter hey hope you had a good week just checking in again to see the status then the following week hey hope all is well just wanted to check in on the status thank you so much gracious and kind gracious and kind you will continue to email them then there is that secondary email address that you can use um, if you're not hearing back i can't remember what it is uh, I think Raul, if you know it, throw it in there for us. Sorry, I know I rely on you so heavily for things. Um, yeah, if, if anybody has that email address, there's a secondary email address you can use if you're not hearing back from your recruiter. Now, this is definitely only for candidates that are in the interview process and have at least been through one interview and are not hearing back. Um, thank you. If you just received a rejection email app with referral from a recruiter, is it out of line to reach back with the updated resume and inquire about other fits? Um, no, I mean, always push, right? If you have somebody's email address, push. But if you are going to reach back with an updated resume and inquire about other fits, 
you're asking them to do the work for you. So what do you want to do? You want to reverse it and say, I found these two positions that appear to be a strong match. I'm a good fit for these reasons. And you're going to, you're going to write three to five bullets for why you're a good fit. Then you'll attach that resume and you'll provide your availability to chat about those roles for the next two or three weeks. We got to make it as easy as possible for them to help us. You do that and you'll have massive success. We're at the thirties at the thirties. I'm going to do a quick prompt. This is your first time here. The business is practiceinterviews.com. We do interview and negotiation coaching today. We have a special offer. If you use the coupon code shine S H I N E, you'll have a hundred bucks off our interview mastery course. That's just till 1159 Pacific time today. Again, that coupon code is shine. If you like what we're doing today, smash that like button. If you've never subscribed, I go live every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific and new content videos every Monday. Every other Monday, sorry. Hi, Jeff. I applied for a CE role at GCP, went through all the interviews and was going to the offer phase before the role went away. Okay. Hiring manager reached out after and told me he wants to hire me as soon as I count available. This is good news, right? Anything to consider on this? Tim, it's just good news. Um, this is a very, very common position for CEs right now. I have multiple CEs who we did the negotiation coaching and then there was the freeze and we don't have teams. And just so Q1 to Q2 of next year is really where I feel like we're going to get some good feedback. We're going to have a good path forward. Okay. So it's just going to be a patience game. Just stay as patient as you can. And maybe follow up with the hiring manager and say, hey, should I check in with you once a month? Should I wait to hear back from you just so you can create that good cadence with them? And good luck. Uh, Jessica Garcia is trying to connect with you. It is asking for your email. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, so if you want to come back and tell us more, I'm not, I'm not sure who Jessica is. I haven't heard from anybody like that. I don't know if you're talking directly to me or you're trying to connect with somebody else. Please let us know. Hey, Jeff, I failed an AWS EA interview and was reached out to him for an admin assistant role. The recruiter said there would be no reload offer and max pay of 60 to 70 K. Okay. When I express that the pay is a bit lower than expected, but I would be interested in continuing the interview, <laughs> the recruiter ghosted me. All right. Um, wow. Um, executive. Okay. Executive assistant. So um, what company is this? I mean, this would be 60 to 70 K. Yeah. Recruiter ghosting you. I mean, this is, this is just common practice, right? So, um, come back, tell us a little bit more about the company. If you feel comfortable, uh, give us a little bit more data. Let me know how I can help. Hi, Jeff. Hope you're doing well. Had an interview with Nintendo. Awesome. In mid October and haven't heard back. I messaged the hiring manager and the recruiter, but haven't heard back. Is this normal? Yep. So graciousness and kindness and continued follow-ups. What we're trying to do here at home, like very candid about this. You want them to feel bad about themselves. If they're gonna, if they're gonna have this terrible, bad, poor behavior, well, let's flip it on them and be super nice about it. I'm still really excited and engaged. Um, just, I just want to continue to see how we can drive the process forward. And you will check in week after week after week. Make them feel bad about it because you will never change your tone. You will always stay gracious and kind and continue to follow up. Now at a certain point, you'll probably just stop, but I would do it for a month, two months, continue to check in because you have to make them feel bad about their poor behavior. It is. A, it takes them five seconds to email you back and say, sorry, the position's filled. Sorry, we found somebody else. Thank you for your time. The position's filled. We're no longer hiring for the position. It takes them five seconds. So it's pathetic that they can't do it. So we need to make them feel the pain through graciousness and kindness. I know it's totally ridiculous, but, but definitely do it. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate the feedback. Also, in clearing my rounds at Google, your videos were super helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, Jeff, what would be your elevator pitch to an interview and closing out the interview? How important is this when wrapping up an interview? Um, I don't think that we need to pitch at the end of an interview with the outlier situation being a sales role. 
So a sales role, especially if it's like a pretty heavy duty, like out, outbound, outward facing role, we might try and close and say, is there anything that I can share with you or uncover or any reason why we shouldn't move this to the next stage, next step? You're going in and you're trying to close. That's very sales driven closing. But really the most important closing at the end is if they give you time for questions, what do you love the most about the company? What do you love the most about the role? What is the coolest thing you're working on right now? What do you love about the team environment and, and fostering and working with the team? Positive, positive, positive. We focus it on them so often. Think about all the times you've asked questions at the ends of the interview that were focused in on you. Well, what do we know? We know that people like talking about themselves, and the more they talk about themselves, the more they'll like you. So if you're the type of person who goes to a party and asks all questions and does a lot of listening, you're going to be more liked than the person who does all the talking. So I kind of put that mindset into the end of the interview to say, we got to ask about them so that the last things that they're talking about are themselves. And therefore, when the interview ends, they like you more. I hope that helps. Is there an advantage to keeping your profile open at Google during the team match phase or better to close it and reopen it next year if the chances of match are slim? No reason to close it. I mean, I just don't see any reason to do that. Uh, you'll stay more top of mind for the recruiter as they organize the information. Um, within G Hire, that's their applicant tracking system. They're going to continue to see your name, so you'll stay top of mind for them. So I don't think there's any need to. If you feel like there is some need that you want to do that, you can, but I, I don't see any real reason to do it. Okay. Let's go back up here for a second. Amazon is only going to pay you 60 to 70K and not offer Relo. That sounds, that doesn't sound right. Um, I haven't ever heard of Amazon not offering Relo unless it was, is this a contract role? Because that, that's the only scenario where I haven't seen them offer relocation. So um, this is really weird. In 60 to 70K, we all know that Seattle is a very expensive market. So 60 to 70K doesn't get you that far. Um, and not when you'd be working at Amazon. If this is a full-time admin assistant, you should have base. You should have a year one and two sign-on bonus. And you should get equity in a full-time role. So it sounds like maybe it's a contract role. I don't know. Tell us more. Hi, Jeff, have you seen any L3 roles open up at Google? Yeah. But remember, this is a case-by-case -case basis. So the L3 roles that open up, they're going to be all over the place globally, and it's just going to be business needs. So I've seen L3 suite hires. I've seen L3 TSEs. I've seen L3 everything, right? But it's, it's just so much slower. It's so much less. But I have seen sporadically L3 roles opening up, yeah. Hi, Jeff. Accepted an L6 UX research role at AWS today, offer three weeks ago, but they didn't improve my original offer at all. Still in the team match with G since November of 21, interviews valid till March. Okay. Um, L6 US research, UX research role at AWS, and they didn't move at all? Wow. I mean, Amazon has been tough to negotiate with this year. I mean, I've, I've been through this before, but I always get them to move. Always. I always get them to move the base, always the year one and two sign on, and always the equity. It hasn't been a ton this year, but they always move. And UX is pretty hot. UX research is pretty hot. Um, this should be a really good paying role. Um, UX is... I've seen some really, really good UX offers globally uh, in 2022. So uh, just keep Google open because, I mean, if you've got a jump ship, uh, an L6 UX research role is going to pay pretty well at Google. Okay. So keep us posted, Rick. Okay. Thanks for the amazing work. A question regarding the reprioritizations at Google. Does a role getting reprioritized mean the position got canceled? You were interviewing when reprioritization happened and the recruiter said, this doesn't mean I was rejected. However, a month, 
the Google portal shows my application is closed and the role is now not available. Um, well, reprioritization has been super funky, right? So there hasn't been a lot of rhyme or reason to this at all. Um, so, but if your application is closed, um, so you got it. So you were interviewing. Um, so did you actually conduct interviews? Because if you conducted any interviews, like an, even an initial phone interview, you'd get a survey. If you got that survey and they never got back to you and then all of a sudden, you just your application is closed, then you should be giving the feedback that, hey, this position was closed and nobody ever contacted me. We've got to make them feel the pain, okay? Um, is this possible to happen? Yeah, I mean, anything's been possible. Um, so I'm sorry to hear that, but if your application got closed, you should get a survey and you should tell them in the survey, I'm getting this survey with no feedback after I interview. Okay, I hope that helps. Hey Jeff, when you were at Google, did you use Google Voice to communicate with your candidates? Is that a dedicated app on the phone? Um, I did use Google Voice, uh, but not to communicate with candidates. Like um, I used, I just, I just called everybody, right? Like so, any rejection, it was a call. Any Moving forward is a call. You get through HC, it was a call. So it was kind of set that tone. Um, all Google numbers, we used Google Voice, um, which is just, you know, like a, a like a system. For a Google Voice app, I would imagine there's some form of an app, but I, I haven't used Google Voice in a really long time. Uh, I have seen an L3 suite. I actually was working with an L3 suite uh, negotiation client uh, this morning. You know, we were negotiating their offer. So it's happening, but again, it's just not happening as often. L3 sweet hires are just less. So yes, as recently as this morning, I've seen it, but you're just not going to see a ton of them globally. Okay. Can you expand on the topic of creating space during the interview? Um, creating space. Um, I believe we're talking about creating space from a timing perspective, right? So uh, most of the times when, when we create space, we're trying to just allow our brain to connect to the question. So creating space would be something like, I'm going to take a minute to gather my thoughts. And not all interviewers love this, but your answers will be way better. Now, when we create space on the behavioral side, we're thinking about the pivot point. What's our best example? And then where should the actions start in correlation to the question? Because so often there's too much story. Then obviously on the open-ended and hypothetical side, we ask for that minute, we create space. We start to ask ourselves, well, have I been through anything similar in the past? We go right down to our cheat sheet. We look at our clarifying questions, maybe some go-to framework concepts and even some pre-planned assumptions. But we build space. I like space right after the question has been introduced. We restated. We've clarified the question. Then we ask for the space. Let me know if that answered your question. Hi, Jeff. Um, I'm in the team match phase for a role with GTEC. But like others have noted, current matches are slim none. My interview scores are only valid for the GTEC org. Okay. Any advice in getting in front of some other orgs at Google? Should I work through my G Tech recruiter before applying? If so, how many roles should I send them and how often? Okay. You can apply to other roles. It's not recommended. I would recommend that you work through your G Tech recruiter, but very few roles. If you're going to send them roles, I'm talking one to two roles. If you throw 10 or 15 roles at them, they're just not going to do it because for each role, you're going to send them the link. You're going to send them three to five bullets for why you're a fit. You might send them a specific resume for that role as well, where you change out the bulleted summary. You're going to provide them with your availability over the next couple of weeks, but they still have to go. They have to find that other recruiter in the system. They have to reach out to that recruiter. So if you can provide all the information up front, it's going to be easy, but for them to do it five or 10 or 15 times, it's going to be hard one or two at a time. And don't do that every week. Do that once a month. For example, I hope that helps. Okay, the email address. This email address, thank you, Raul, for this. I appreciate it. I don't know why I can't remember this. I always forget this. It's candidate interview support at google.com. 
send an email. If you are in the interview process and you have not heard back from your recruiter, use this email address. You will hear back from that recruiter pretty soon. This is not the intent of this email address. This isn't what they wanted it to be. This is supposed to be for urgent matters. Who cares? If our recruiters aren't getting back to us, it's urgent to us. So we are going to use this workaround and use candidate-interview-support at google.com to go around a lazy, unorganized, unempathetic recruiter who is just not putting themselves in your shoes. Okay. We are at only 45 minutes. Now, obviously, in you know, earlier this year, we, these would run an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours. I really understand things are slowing down quite a bit. We've got a good audience of about 76 people in here. What are your questions? What's top of mind for you? Like what, what's going on? Any data, any information, any feedback, any questions? I don't want to end this live yet. I mean, I'm, I'm okay to end it at 45 minutes, but that would be really slow. And I know we have a really good audience now. Um, why don't we highlight a few things and see if any additional questions come in, and then if not, well, we can we can go ahead and end it. But I know times are challenging and tricky, and so a lot of this is about staying the course. I think it's also a great opportunity as things are slow. I really look at the November and December time frame as a great opportunity to start upping your interview skill set, right? And so that just means if you're putting a lot of practice and effort and time now, when we hit the new year, January, February, you'll be ready to go. I mean, we all know that things, even in our offices, they slow down a little bit, especially in December. So take this as the opportunity to really prep and plan accordingly. And so the free resources page on practiceinterviews.com, I'm really proud of that page. We have nine great free resources. Definitely be using that behavioral template and the open-ended template. Those are also part of the course, and I just broke them out so you could have a couple free resources. But those resources will really help you get organized with two question banks. I think the total number of questions, I know one question bank is 4,000, the other one's in the thousands too. Lots of practice questions. If you're on the front end, work on your resume, work on your LinkedIn. Just lots of opportunities to improve right now. So. Um, Use that free resources page. Also, the Slack community. You know, I push on this quite a bit. Um, the Slack community growth has slowed down quite a bit over the last couple of months, but this is where the community is holding each other up. I'm not going to be in that Slack group every single day. I'll check in every few days, but it's a chance to get your questions answered when we're not going live, even though I will do my best to go live every week. For as many weeks into the year, we'll kind of test it to see if we're going to go the last couple of weeks of the year. The recruiter's words were, the total compensation that we can provide you for this position may not meet your expectations. The total comp will be closer to 65 to 70K and no reload candidates and no reload candidates need to be in Seattle or will. Okay, so you don't have to relocate. Okay, so that makes sense. I think it's fine to say, okay, reach back out, say, I'm still engaged and interested. 65 to 70k in total comp can you provide a breakdown of what that would look like from a base year one and year two sign on an equity perspective because when you start to put all those numbers together i mean you're talking about with a year one year two sign on an equity we're talking about a base salary of like thirty thousand dollars so i'm really not sure what's going on there um, and why it's so low okay what are your thoughts about panel interviews uh, i have a final round at a sports betting company on monday and there's a four for one interview. Anything you should be keeping in mind? Well, panel interviews are different than they used to be. In the past, when we'd be face to face, I would ask you to engage with each interviewer as you're talking to each one and answering them directly. Now over video, it's very easy to just stay in tune with the person who's talking to you. Just maybe you use their name to address them. I think I'm actually, I've changed my mind on panel interviews lately. I'm actually more of a fan of panel interviews than I used to be. Now, four to one, maybe not, but two to one, and the benefits of each other, uh, one person playing off of another, one person playing off of another, as long as they're coached and trained on how to do it, uh, really like that. So, um, but just, just engage with the person who's asking you the question, address them, and then as other questions come in, address the person who's speaking to you, and ideally you're using their name. 
With the daylight savings kicking in, this is quite a late start for India at 1130. Maybe we could shift it by an hour earlier. Raul, this was a very, um, this was a tough decision for me. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't really know what to do. I definitely have a nice audience in India and I didn't want to forget about them. The data for 9 a.m. showed as the absolute worst time. I did polls and, and 9 a.m. was showing up as people's least favorite time. I am happy to go even earlier, which I think would make more sense for the India audience, which did show up pretty good, which would be 8 a.m. Pacific time. I'm just seeing if that works for the Pacific time audience. This is really kind of a, I felt really bad about keeping it at 10 because I knew once we flipped the clocks for India, this was not going to be a good time. Uh, maybe you and I can offline it um, on Slack and have a quick conversation about it. Okay. Thanks for that. And obviously, I'm always open to feedback and changing the time. Uh, it's just, it was really weird. Like 9 a.m. was by far the least preferred time. So um, let's talk about it. DM me on Slack. We'll we'll chat today. Maybe, maybe I'll follow up tomorrow. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, do you know if the open a pastry shop question is still being asked? It was being asked this year. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Um, I don't really ask if that's being asked, but I know up until at least maybe mid-year this year is being asked. And I, I do think that, I don't know, I think maybe it's potential, like if they see some of these questions getting out there, that they will switch it up and change it. I know, for instance, once that TAM question was leaked, it wasn't leaked by me, but I did a video of it. And then the TAM process changed pretty quickly. I'm not saying that I'm changing Google process, but I think when information gets out, they do want to make sure that they're changing it. So I don't know if they're still asking that question, but they were, um, I did see it this year. Um, it was earlier this year. I don't think it's been referenced maybe since, maybe since the summertime was the last time I heard about somebody being asked it. But as far as I know, they're still asking. Uh, what are some of the medium sized companies that your clients have been negotiating with that don't get mentioned often, but are paying competitive? Um, I don't, I mean, so I do negotiate with some medium sized companies. If I gave those names, that would be like kind of maybe a little too specific, but more of what I do is, is I do more negotiation with like larger startups. Um, so I think that the piece to remember with startups is that I, like, I don't really buy into the fact that that equity is worth anything. So if you're going to go for a startup, you're really trying to maximize base and bonus. And that's what I really push on. Medium sized companies. I, I guess candidly, like I, I don't do a lot of medium sized companies. Um, you know, most of the companies that are going to be smaller are still big in comparison to the market. They're still going to be big name brands like the Ubers and Salesforce, Bloomberg, um, Twitter, but obviously that's not going to happen that much anymore. So, so I guess some of these companies are pretty big. So I don't, yeah, Diego, it's a great question. I don't have any that are top of mind right now, but I'll think about it. Um, maybe come back next week or in the next couple of weeks and I might have a better answer for you. Thanks. Are you seeing companies rushing to fill positions. I've personally seen a lot of recruiters reaching out. I assume they can't fill the position by the end of the year and then it disappears. 100%. These offers are getting rushed. Hiring managers are worried not only about end of year, which oftentimes it's like fill it or lose it, but also with all the conditions like my meta, my meta negotiation client who I was speaking with before uh, the live today, we are absolutely trying to pick up the pace on the process because I, I am worried about losing headcount. So while my strong recommendation typically in the negotiation phase is slow and steady wins the race, I think we have to just understand that we can put offers at risk um, by delaying. And that actually did happen with a Microsoft negotiation client. Um, we we kind of delayed and then things got reprioritized. So it can happen. So yeah, um, they're trying to fill. So just know that that's going to be part of the strategy. Absolutely. Thank you for the resources and videos. My question is, how long does the, does the result of passing on-site interviews G-Valid for T-Match 
one needs to restart the process. Typically it's a year, but I think they might be having some forgiveness because of the freeze, but typically it's one year that your interview feedback will stay valid and can be repurposed. Thanks for everything. How do you get to the Slack group? Practiceinterviews.com. It will be along that top banner. Just click Slack group and you can get into it, okay? In the email, the recruiter said the breakdown of our total compensation ranges are confidential and said not sacrificing long-term value for short-term results. I live in Florida, so it would be a big difference in cost of living and out-of-pocket. She said she let me know, so I'm not surprised if the offer selected to edit the previous her words amazon's comp philosophy is ownership leaders are owners who think long term and don't sacrifice long-term value for short-term results as a response to comp wow um wow that is that's terrible uh now again i, I think i'm still a little confused you live in florida they don't expect you to reload to Seattle or they do. And for them to tell you that comp doesn't matter is total BS. Comp matters. And 60 to 70K in Seattle. Like, I know that people live on less there. Absolutely. But it is a very expensive market, especially if you're relocating on your own and you have to get a one bedroom that to be close to anything, 1500, 2000 at that range, it's, it's, it, you are going to struggle. It's not going to be great, right? If we say a third of our income can go towards rent and it's 2000 a month for a one bed, that's 24,000 out of pocket. So you start to do the math and it's, it's not great. So I just think it's totally ridiculous that they're throwing these really low ball numbers at you. Um, and to say it's long-term perspective, it's like, well, that's great, but I got to be able to pay my bills. So, yeah, I don't love that approach. I really don't think that recruiter knows what the word empathy means and that they're just sending you this cookie cutter response. And obviously anybody who's been here, I am super tough on recruiters. I've been a recruiter for 15 years. I was recruiting up until on the, on the side a little bit up until last year. So I just, the, the way that they deal with candidates, is just a, blows my mind. So I'm sorry to hear that. I do think the long-term perspective of getting Amazon on your resume and LinkedIn profile is great. Take that job and leave as quickly as possible. Three months, six months, and then jump ship and go get paid what you deserve. How much wiggle room for negotiation for Google offers have by default? Depends. Yeah. I mean, it's so weird and funky. It's different for everybody, but Usually from the baseline offer um, up, you know, I mean, I'm usually able to negotiate from like the baseline up. It's usually 20 to 30 percent above what their baseline offer is. So it's usually very flexible. Google for me is the most fun company to negotiate with. They're the ones who negotiate the most, have the most wiggle room, most flexibility, and you can continue to push back a ton. So uh, they're the best one to negotiate for me. Um, I kind of know the internal processes, but I don't think that really matters. They're just, they tend to be the most flexible. What are some ways in articulating my support and examples of inclusivity in my response to interview questions? It's a great question. I don't like I don't like when interview answers have a forced component, whether that's forced demonstrating of leadership, forced demonstration of inclusivity, it should come out very natural. It's not that I don't want you to drive towards items like leadership or inclusivity, but just don't force it. It's got to be natural because if it's forced, it will feel and sound forced. And so I bring up leadership because that is the most common question. How do I bring more leadership into my answers? It's like, well, we'll just naturally come in. Again, it doesn't mean that I don't want you to be thinking through it, but I don't want it to be forced as well. I hope that helps. Hi, Jeff. Consultant positions in, in magnet companies are always difficult to figure out. How should I approach the RRK portions? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that basically when you look at these contract roles, when they hire, they typically are very RRK driven. So you just want to really be thinking about your past experience, working on your behavioral examples, 
and then pre-planning for a potential open-ended RRK question that would be role specific, pre-planning those assumptions, clarifying questions, frameworks, et cetera. So um, it's, the contract rules are much more straightforward. It's less interviews. It's an easier process. So let me know if you have additional questions that would be helpful for me to answer. They expect relocation to Seattle and they want candidates to be in Seattle. If you, you would need to relocate on your own. Okay. Okay. Good to know. I mean, again, I get the long-term perspective. I don't disagree with it. I just don't think there's been a lot of empathy in the approach. And I just don't think that they understand basic communication skills. My G recruiter mentioned that after the old interview results become invalid after a year plus, I can re-interview for one level higher due to the additional experience. Will I redo all the interviews? Uh, yeah, after a year, you're gonna have to redo all of them. Um, but leveling up would be great, obviously. For Google, non-tech roles in negotiation is the same. The interview process in Ruse has been a bit different than Swiss, for example. Yeah, negotiation's the same. Uh, I don't negotiate any differently for non-tech than tech. It's all the same. You just push, 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 you anchor high and you're gracious and kind. Oops, sorry, we jumped here a little bit. I'm gonna go back for a second. Hi Jeff, thanks for all your advice. You had a phone interview for a TPM role, cellular value validation in Pixel, whereby the interviewer had only asked PM questions, which I was not prepared for. Initially, I'd asked the recruiter prior to the phone interview if I could use my BG and wireless product lines as programs. And the recruiter mentioned I could, which I did. Okay. However, interviewers seemed confused about the role during the interview. JD more focused on wireless rather than PM, along with my responses to his interview questions. I'm yet to hear from the recruiter. Should I follow up? Yeah, see, there might have been a little bit of a misunderstanding and just try and get some clarity. Be really gracious and kind. If they came at you from a very PM perspective, like, I don't know if this program, not everybody, the abbreviations PM should be product manager and PGM should be program manager. Not that anybody's supposed to know that. Um, but tell me more about whether it was a program manager or, or product manager, because product manager interviews are completely different than anybody, anything else. Um, these are technical. Okay, so Victor, I'm just going back. Okay, so we're talking about consulting positions. And these are technical consultant roles. Do they want sweet PM experience? Some sales, it depends. Yeah, it really, really depends on the specific position. So I can't tell you for sure. Um, every contract position will be a little different. Hi, Jeff. I'm a new college graduate and will be receiving an L3 SWE offer very soon. The recruiter says that the L3 SWE you and I roles are only negotiable if you have a better offer. This is true. New grad offers are non-negotiable. It's a bummer. Uh, <laughs> I learned this the very, very hard way when I took on a negotiation client. We found out it was a new grad offer, and now I know new grad offers are not negotiable without a competing offer. That's correct. Time for some good news. Another GCB offer was rolled out yesterday for India. However, the recruiter refused to disclose level. Um, I just, I don't know what to do with, with these recruiters. Like when you get approved and you're in the offer stage, they have to give you the level. And at this point, like, honestly, if you know this person, I would recommend going around them and going right to the hiring manager and saying like, I, I, I don't know what to do here. Like I can't, I'm not being told the level. Like I would never sign an offer if, you get approved, you should be told the level. This happened with an Amazon recruiter um, that I had with a negotiation client. We went through negotiations, and then once they signed the offer, they gave them the, the level. That is not how it's internally done. These recruiters are doing going rogue, and here's what's happening. There's no accountability. They're not being held accountable for the survey results that are going on. we got to crush these recruiters. They have to feel the pain of this bad behavior 
you have to know your level. Otherwise, how are you supposed to know how to negotiate? If you're at the offer stage, you've got to know level. This person needs to strongly push back and say, I appreciate that, but I, I seriously have about 10 friends and they all knew level. So I'm trying to understand if you have a new or different process in place because they don't have. And ultimately, if they won't give them the level, they have to negotiate at the level that they believe they're going in. And then when they get that survey, they have to give massive, massive pain to that recruiter who would not tell them level. When, the, when they've passed the offer review or hiring committee or whatever stage it is for the company and they're in the negotiation phase, level needs to be disclosed. That's just absurd. It just makes me so frustrated. Program manager. Okay, so... Um, so you said that the, so we're going to go back, Ricky, your question. I mean, you should have been, you should have been asked, you should have been asked program management questions and domain specific questions, either hypothetical, behavioral, or both. Um, so um, it would be very common for them to come at you with very programmatic questions because that's what they test in these initial interviews. Um, Pixel is a division that they're hiring for still quite a bit during these times. But yeah, you should expect, your recruiter should have told you it's going to be a mix of domain experience and heavy program management experience. That's what always happens in those first interviews. The recruiter spoke to numbers, but not the level. Well, if, if the person didn't ask, then they didn't, you know, the person needs to ask, but level should be disclosed. Okay. Sorry, sneeze, comment. <coughs> this is we're live, so I can't control the sneezes. Thanks. Okay. Um, in team match, a new recruiter left Google based on LinkedIn. What can I do? Um, hopefully, you have some other point of contact, whether it's a recruiting coordinator, a sourcer, a hiring manager, an interviewer. You just got to find Kevin, that one person who you can get in contact with or re-LinkedIn, hit him up on LinkedIn. You left Google. Who should I talk to? I'm in the team match stage. What's going on? You know, so um, any of those steps and then come back. Keep us posted. Okay. Yeah, Ricky, I hope that helps. I've tried reaching out to old recruiter last week, but no response. How long after reaching out to old recruiter? Once a week, once a week, poke, 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 poke. Okay, keep it going. Okay, I'm going to go ahead into my sum up. Any additional questions, I'm going to answer any and all questions that come in while I'm live. Coupon code SHINE, S-H-I-N-E, 100 bucks off of our interview mastery course today. It's a great offer, just available till 11.59 Pacific time today. I do interview coaching. I do negotiation coaching. It's all one-on-one. -on -one. It's all with me. Um, free resources, nine free resources at practiceinterviews.com. Join our free Slack group. I, I'm going to go live every 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'm open to flexibility on that time every Tuesday and new original content videos every Monday. I just had to push back personal reasons. Um, if you like what we're doing today, smash that like button. If you've never subscribed, consider subscribing. I'm going to answer any last minute questions and then I'm hop off and then I'll be back next week. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Jeff. Had my one-on-one -on -one with you last summer. It made all the difference. Interview process has been lengthy, but I hope for good news soon. Hoping for good news too. We used to come into these lives and get 10 to 15 people telling us they landed the job per week. Now we occasionally get one or two so any positive news for anybody these days would be great thank you when is the new website coming up uh this month this month i actually have the final edits um coming to my website designer today so you'll see a brand new website um, i'm going to try and add some content in there the one other piece I just want to pitch really quickly, I never, I don't think I've ever pitched this. I got a blog post up every week. I mean, I'm pretty consistent with the blog posts. There's, I think, like 63 or 64 blog posts. So if you like reading, they're all very short. Try to keep them around 500 words and keep them snappy. So um, the blogs have been great. Um, it's been a fun experience, and I will continue to do the blog. So um, I know 
I don't think that they're being viewed or read that much, but it can be helpful if you like uh, reading. So that's another thing. I hope that the new website just has better flow, better feel, better understanding of like what I actually do and how I provide it. And it's a very old website and dated, so it, it needs a nice refresh. Thanks for, for asking. Uh, sweet, 20 plus years of experience. US based in Georgia was reached out to Google Recruiter to apply for a staff software engineer info GCP. Past phone screen with hiring freeze. How real is this? If it's real, what level could staff sweet comp? Um, 200 to 275 plus base if approved. What total comp should I apply for? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking L6 Georgia, probably Atlanta. Um, you know, it's going to be significantly higher than that. Uh, we'd probably be anchoring maybe into the 500s at an L6, um, maybe a little higher. So, yeah, uh, the numbers are going to be quite a bit higher. So just keep us posted. Um, and, and once we get closer on level confirmation, we can get better with the numbers. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Sincerely appreciate it. Appreciate this community. And we'll be back next week, 10 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. Thank you.